morning and welcome as we celebrate the Feast of the Most Blessed Trinity this morning. We welcome all of you who are joining us via our YouTube channel in your homes. Welcome as part of our extended family. Today we welcome our guest organist, Elizabeth Lannan. Let me thank you for being here. We always tell our guest organist that there are many more keys on that organ. You don't need to use them all. Just <laughs> use the ones that you want. It makes it much more comfortable. As you know, we have combined last week and this week the bulletin for 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock mass together. I have asked the 8 o'clock congregation if they are having problems in following what is designated as said at 8 or sung at 10. And so far, there are no objections. And they made it through two weeks. So there's no <laughs> way that you can figure out what you're doing at 10 because you're doing basically everything. But thank you for putting up with changes like consolidating bulletins for the summer saving on paper. And congratulations to all of you for accepting the Great Commission. I asked you yes to, last week to please bring another person to church this Sunday so we can fill the church. And it looks like we have at least 25% more in attendance. So congratulations. <laughs> Let's wait till we have a line out the front door. So keep bringing people to worship with us. We begin with a Trinitarian acclamation, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, saying together, Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Hebrew Scripture. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it, was, and it was so. Go, God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. 
and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with a seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with a seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set the greater light, excuse me, <laughs> uh, God set the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth the swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good, God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created human, humankind in his image. In the image of God, who he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let's recite the canticle together. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. 
glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Think back when you were a small child. I know that a lot of people have never grown up, but try to think back when you were actually, biologically, a small child. And your mother or father sent you on a mission, sent you on a mission with a purpose. They sent you down to the local store to pick up a few things, and they gave you just a certain amount of money to do that. But you know, when you got there, all those candy bars and all those comic books looked so good, and they beckoned to you. And then all of a sudden, you couldn't quite remember what you were supposed to buy for your parents. So when you returned home, you had probably only half of the items, and your parents might have looked at you and said, can't I send you on a simple mission, on a simple errand, and have you do what I ask? Well, it wasn't that you planned on being disobedient, but other things just got in the way. You were sent with a purpose. You were sent with a mission, but it became obscured. Now, for those of you who were servicemen and women for our country, among all the other servants, you can understand the concept of being sent with a purpose, being sent with a mission. The purpose was clear, the cost was high, but a few were sent in order to save the larger group. There was usually an urgency, and nothing was to distract those from accomplishing their purpose, their mission. It is with this understanding of being sent with a purpose, being sent with a mission, that we enter this season of Pentecost and Trinity Tide. When we hear this morning the Great Commission to be witnesses to Jesus Christ, to the whole world, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, as long as Jesus was on earth with his apostles and disciples, in the body, so to speak, our Lord's followers could learn day by day what they were to do. They could live out their mission. They could live out their purpose. And if it were unclear or they had a question, then they just turned to Jesus and asked him. But after the ascension into heaven, when Jesus left the earth, he wasn't with them in bodily form any longer. So today and then, from the ascension and today at Trinity, he gave his followers, and he gives you and me our marching orders, so to speak. Plus, he's given you and me the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit to help us accomplish our purpose and our mission of being sent in the name of the Trinity. So we focus on two major callings this morning. As the Father has sent me to bring peace to the world, so I send you to bring the peace that passes all understanding. And secondly, Jesus says, as the Father has sent me to bring forgiveness to the world, so I send you to forgive. Peace and forgiveness. <clears throat> two missions, two callings from Christ as part of the Great Commission to all of us this morning. So let's look at the first part of Jesus' commission or call to us. Peace, a big word. But try to make it individualistic and try to make it personal by thinking about someone you know, yourself, your spouse, your partner, your kids, a neighbor, a relative, someone at church. Try to bring to your mind some acquaintance or friend who you think possesses true peace in their hearts. Their faith seems so strong that nothing seems to undo them, which of course undoes you or me, because by comparison we might seem doubtful or weak. But they are so strong, nothing can shake them. 
You know, all around us are people who are short of patience, short of temper, living from one crisis to another, burning the candle at both ends. Their lives are filled with anxiety and confusion, two spirits which are definitely not of God. They hunger, they thirst, as does the whole world, for some sort of peace which can still their minds and still and calm their hearts. Psychiatrists' offices and pastors' offices, among others, are filled with persons of all ages every day of every week trying to find a path to peace in their hearts. Many spending thousands of dollars in the secular world for this searching spirit of peace. Families, marriages, our nation, churches, relationships, everywhere we look seem to be breaking apart every day because we just can't seem to discover how to live with each other in any kind of peace and harmony. We've got plenty of grief, plenty of despair, plenty of sickness, plenty of hopelessness, but somehow we just can't put our fingers on how are we going to get along with everybody with some sort of peace. But if more people turn to Jesus in their lives, if more people turn to the Pentecost spirit, to the name of the Blessed Trinity, then this peace would come. And if you don't believe it, then try it, and it might just come to you. Jesus himself said that he came to bring peace and not a sword. Well, certainly the world doesn't need any more swords. That's why we receive the Spirit of God, that dove of peace, that armor which St. Paul says we are to gird ourselves with, having our feet shod with the sandals of peace. When we realize we are sent with the purpose, with a mission of bringing peace into the world, God's peace into the world, into our homes, into our relationships, into our nation, into the hearts of our neighbors, guess what? I bet people will be beating down your doors wanting to know where did you find that peace and how can I get it? Let me share with you a story about an elderly Christian woman badly crippled from arthritis, who was confined to her home for most of her life. But she had a tremendous sense of inner peace about her. And when asked about her personal suffering, what did she say? She responded, yes, I suffer, but there are no nails here. He had the nails, I have the peace. She pointed to her head. There are no thorns around my head. He had the thorns, I have the peace. And she pointed to her side and said, I have no spear in my side. He had the spear, but I have the peace. She had that peaceful sense of her mission in life. And we can have it too. Now as for forgiveness, I guess this is one of the most difficult missions, commissions, callings to accept. God commissions us with the power to forgive. We heard that in the gospel after Pentecost power to forgive sins, the power to retain sins. But what do we have to do? We have to put aside our wills and follow God's will. And that's something hard to do. We're not good at putting ourselves aside. We're good at putting ourselves in front. We're good at telling people we can lead. We're not good as followers. We're especially not good if somebody tells us to follow because we already automatically think that we know more than the other person. When was the last time you were able to walk up to somebody and say, I forgive you, no strings attached, unconditionally, I forgive you? Almost 
like what we're going to pray when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Not retaining the grudges, forgiving them on the surface, but retaining the grudges. No. Cleaning the slate. You know, the world doesn't know how to forgive on a large scale, but with the powerful spirit of God and in the name of the Blessed Trinity, today we have been redeemed by Jesus himself and given that power in the Great Commission to set hate free, to release guilt, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord as scripture says. You and I have been given the very power that Jesus had on the cross when he forgave those thieves. But how are we to do that? I mean, we can't redeem the whole world, but we don't have to because, you know, in many ways, forgiveness goes from one person at a time to another. That's how progress is actually made. Now, we might not agree with it because we are impatient humanity, want to do it all at once. True progress, true faith, true salvation is made one step at a time. So forgiveness is made one person at a time, not the whole bundle at once, not the whole world, but one person at a time. We are sent to bring Christ's forgiveness one person at a time. And when we fulfill that purpose, the world will change. How? One person at a time. Now maybe you don't think one person at a time will make a difference, but it will. Because remember this, Remember the effect of the death of one man on the whole world? Jesus Christ. Well, it's the same power, the same effect, the same love, the same mission, which is given to you this morning through that great commission. It was Christ's, yes, but the best part of all of this is that it not only can be yours as it is this morning, but it has already been given to you today and for all the rest of the days of your lives. Freely, unconditionally, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, O oh, come let us adore him. Amen. the prayers of the people. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, please pray for the Episcopal Anglican province of Alexandria, <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the Merrimack Valley Deanery, Brook School Chapel, North Andover, St. Anne's, North Billerica, All Saints, West Newbury, St. Mark's Westford, and the Episcopal City Mission. We also hold in prayer the people of Ukraine and all who suffer in war-torn nations throughout the world. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially for all of the people on our St. David's prayer list. And we add to that list Jill Hurley (coughs) and Jim Harrelson. Almighty God, we believe that you are working in the lives of those who love you using all things for your glory. We trust that in Andy's sabbatical time, along with all our pilgrims who have returned from Wales, God will be at work in their lives, in the lives of their families and in the lives of the people of this church. May this parish family also be on a sabbatical, enriching our community life together, making new relationships and being united in the name of Christ, our risen Lord and Redeemer, May the Holy Spirit continue to possess our hearts, our souls, and our lives as we journey into a renewed life together. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
before we start our regular announcements. Is there anybody visiting for the first time? Is there anybody that remembers if this is the first time or at any time? New, newcomers, first time? Good, you're all perfect. We never, we never embarrass people by asking who you are and where you're from. So who are you and where are you from? <laughs> Great, welcome. Uh, I'm Michigan, Michigan. Wow. We probably have about the same temperature between Michigan and here, I would say. But I, I think you might be right. Well, good to see you. Thank you for being here and joining our parish family. Good morning. We are so fortunate that this week, all of our pilgrims, except those surnamed Taylor, <laughs> have returned from Wales. And they've each agreed to spend a little time with us during announcements, giving us something about the highlight of their experience. They managed to organize themselves so that there'll be someone at each of our next three Sundays at both services. And this morning, it's Nancy Black's turn, and I'm happy to welcome her to the mic. Good morning. Um, I could speak to you for probably a whole day about everything that went on, but I'll keep it short and promise you that I will today be at the, um, after the service. Uh, I'll, I'll stay here and answer any questions you want. Um, I was originally going to talk about the music a little bit, and I will, but I just want to say first and foremost that I have never seen such a sense of community um, as we had traveling together, the eight of us. I mean, there wasn't a time when anyone was alone if they didn't want to be there. Um, we were always counting heads to make sure everybody was there. If somebody had a problem, we were right there helping each other. And it was just, it was from that sense, one of the most spiritual things I've, trips I've ever been on. Um, and now about the music, it was, it, 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 you just can't describe how wonderful the music is there. And the money that you raised is going to very good use. We talked to uh, three of the scholars and the music director and the assistant music director and those um, they were they were boys this time well young men this time um, I when I heard everything that they do all day every day I, I thought to myself when do they have time for their studies well I found out that they are taking an off year between uh, their high school and their their further education um, to do this. And um, they really do spend almost their entire lives in, in the cathedral, uh, either singing or one of them, I didn't realize, was the one who played the organ the first um, evening service, evening song that we went to. I mean, phenomenal musicians, all of them already. Um, the acoustics in the cathedral uh, are just beyond your wildest imagination. It's just incredible. Um, one of the things I noticed about the song mass on Sunday was that um, they don't print the musical notes or anything like that in the, the bulletin. Everybody there just sings their loudest and they, uh, they're great. I mean, I mean, it's like you would think they were all trained from the minute they were, you know, born. Um, so I don't know whether they, you know, they don't sing parts or anything like that. I, being an alto myself, I found it hard to sing parts because I didn't have the notes right in front of me, but it was just an interesting thing that I took away from that. Um, I do have, um, the program for the week here, and I do have the program for the sung mass on Sunday, and I will leave them in the back, but I ask that you leave them there because I'm not done with them, and I think other people would enjoy um, looking at them. Um, and I want to thank you all for the opportunity to go. It was uh, just 
incredible in, as I said, spiritually, musically, uh, any way you can think of it was a wonderful trip. Um, and as I said, I will be here at coffee hour afterwards. If you have any questions or want to hear more about it, I'll be delighted to talk to you. Thank you. Good morning, Jim Logan Vestry. I'm here for the third time to give a report on the new St. David's men's group. Uh, we've had our third meeting. We have about 10 to 12. And uh, one of the things we decided was that uh, this is not a committee. Um, you don't have to be voted to be in. And so we consider every male member and every man that comes to St. David's services is part of the men's group. And so uh, after meeting, we right away we knew we needed objectives. And so we have five objectives that I'll give you a, a brief on them. The first one is to support the rector in ways considered meaningful for celebrating and encouraging the spiritual community of St. David's. Number two, to help members of St. David's who request our assistance. And that's perfect, perfectly, uh, purposely left very broad. Number three, to provide fellowship opportunities for members of St. David's. Number four, to consider the changing roles and responsibilities of men in contemporary society. Number five, to better understand ways spiritual life may contribute to one's mental and physical well-being. Now, to proceed from here, we decided that next week on June 11th, between services, the men will have a meet and greet in, in the March room, probably starting at 9.15, 9.20. And I'll be here to make the announcement at the 8, and we hope those men will come. And you 10 o'clockers will be meeting in there and right up until 5 minutes of 10. So you don't have to get here at 9.15, but when you do arrive, just come in and say hello. That's all we ask. Um, and then our first event, we're going to have a potluck supper on Thursday, June 22nd from four to eight in Nelson Hall. Now it is potluck, there's a sign up sheet in the common room, uh, but gentlemen, it's potluck. That doesn't mean that you all can just bring a take out pizza. Uh, so there is a sign up sheet and once the sheet develops, uh, you'll get notified uh, as a request to what to bring. So that's where we are and uh, Going forward, we hope, look forward to a lot more men uh, supporting us. And don't think it's something you have to join. Uh, when we post an event, if it's something that interests you, just come. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jim. And now a word from the ladies. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of the parishioners who came out a month ago for the first outdoor thrift shop annex sale. Your help at eight o'clock in the morning got us set up, ready to roll by a little bit after nine o'clock, one hour. You saved us a lot of time and energy and we appreciate that. And I'm here today to tell you that our next sale is this coming up Saturday, it's a plant sale. Um, and once again, I would like to request that anyone who is willing and able um, to please come at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning um, to help us pull things out of the basement and get it set up on tables in the front yard. We really appreciate your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. There's one other thing that I want to uh, put on your uh, radar for next Saturday, and that is the next Saturday morning here at 10 o'clock. We will have our monthly gathering for coffee with God. Um, we're still in the mode of bring your own coffee. 
um, and we meet here in the chapel in an informal session around faith and faith experiences. And I hope you'll all put it on your calendar and then go to the sale after it's done. Thank you. And just a last word uh, from the liturgical haberdashery department. All churches have different traditions about vestments and what sacred ministers wear. It's usually a tradition observed on high holy days like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, Trinity, that they wear uh, more formal vestments. So Marilyn is attired in the deacon's <laughs> dalmatic. <laughs> Uh, a priest wears a chasuble, deacon wears a dalmatic, and the subdeacon wears a tunicle. We don't have a formal subdeacon here, but the dalmatic and tunicle uh, are almost the same, except the uh, tunicle has two stripes, and the subdeacon carries two nickels, which why, that's why they call it tunicles. Okay. <laughs> You know that we will be electing a bishop soon and a committee will be forming and we would like to join in the prayer for preparation of that search and election. If you would join me in the prayer for the election of a bishop. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And finally, anybody having an anniversary, wedding anniversary? Husbands, wives, spouses? If you would like to come forward for a blessing. We are proud that your earthly marriage reflects the marriage of ours with our own bridegroom, Jesus Christ, and we continually pray that the grace of our marriage with our bridegroom, Jesus Christ, continually indwells in your hearts, in your earthly marriage, and the fact that God has given each of you an earthly spouse to enjoy while you are here on earth. I'm sure you're enjoying each other. I've already asked you how many years and I said, were they consecutive years? <laughs> oh, they, God bless you both. How many years? And how many for you? <laughs> oh, God love you. Great. Congratulations, all of you. And everybody that might be uh, looking uh, on the YouTube, uh, congratulations to all of you if you are celebrating your uh, anniversary of your marriage. Let us pray together. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon all who celebrate their anniversary this month and grant them your grace that they may so live, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may be a witness of your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and drains with you the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congratulations and God bless. Many, many fruitful years ahead of you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, O oh, come, let us adore him.
continue with a great thanksgiving using Eucharistic Prayer A as printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. stand, be seated, or kneel, whichever is in your own liturgical tradition. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with David of Wales, our patron, and all the angels and saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For all of you who are joining us via the YouTube and cannot be here physically present to receive Holy Communion, we offer you this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Speak but the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
sacrifice of this Mass is celebrated for the salvation of our souls, for the greatest glory of God and the glory of all his angels and saints, for all of the benefit of all you who are here and you who are watching via YouTube. We specifically are thankful that the flowers given that grace our holy table this morning are given in thanksgiving for the 55th wedding anniversary of the Reverend Russ and Louisa Allen. And now let us give thanks together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads for God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
note the change in the dismissal beginning with this season after Pentecost. We dispense with hallelujahs for a while. So good thing we got to sing it in the hymn. And I ask you to say it in your heart. But let's not be recorded out loud doing it. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.